My name is uh, Howard Wan. I work for Target Corporation. And the title of this presentation is Query Classification for Solar. So if you think that you have come to the wrong session, please stay. I need your support. <laughs> but I, uh, I'm going to do the best I can to make you this the best hour you ever spent today. So we have a, a lot of information to go through, so I'm going to start the, the talk right now on time. <clears throat> So this is the title. And this is a little bit about myself. Um, I work for Target, as you see right here. And I want to make a clarification. My name is not How, it's Howard. I got this page from uh, the Revolution website. I don't know how it happened, but my middle name is Hao right now, for the time being. I, I, actually, I, I kind of like it because it, that's what I've been doing, all the hows. My manager tell me the what, I do the hows. And so, uh, <clears throat> I work for, I'm working for Target right now. I used to work for eBay and Microsoft, uh, where those are very good companies. I learned a lot from them uh, on the search engine. And the picture is, um, was taken in India, and that was the first tree I ever planted in India. Uh, we were doing some volunteer work with my team members uh, because uh, half of my team are from India, and they are the one who helped me build the classifier, in fact. Uh, this one I'm going to skip. It's not that interesting for now. Uh, if we have time, we can talk about that. So, um, so this is a very brief history of uh, where we came from. Uh, so uh, two years ago, uh, our team actually came here to declare that uh, we were going to migrate our search engine in Target to solar. And so we did that last year. In July uh, last year, we successfully deployed the solar search engine. Um, to power our desktop, then followed by mobile, and followed by tablet. So we spent a fair amount of time tuning it, make it perfect. And then, obviously, we need to improve more. So uh, in uh, September last year, so we deployed our classifier uh, to supplement uh, solar. And that's what I'm going to talk about. So where are we now? Uh, fast forward. So right now, our solar engine powers all the listing page in our target.com website. They include the search and the uh, browse pages. And we support all traffic segments, mobile, desktop, tablet and apps. And uh, I'm happy to say that uh, we improved the relevance by 40% in two years from the day when we had before solar. And uh, obviously, okay, uh, the 40% was not totally from the classifier. The classifier improved it by about 10%. And at the same time, our team has also built many other relevant features. So add up together, it's, it's about 40%, a little bit more in two years' time. Uh, anyone who, is, uh, who are interested in what else we are doing at Target, or our search project, relevance projects, uh, I have a team members here. You are happy. You are, you are welcome to stay to talk to our team members and ask them about all the t projects and opportunities that we have uh, in at, uh, at Target. So, so the first question is always, 
uh, why did we have to build a query classifier for solar? And the, the short answer is that solar doesn't have a native implementation. And we need one to improve the relevance. Um, the long answer is that, well, we have a lot of tail queries. 40% uh, of our queries are tail queries, and the user intent is not very clear. Because most search engine has a problem with very long queries. And then some of our top and short queries are ambiguous. Top query, it means that the, the query, the user enter very often, very high frequency, and those we have to do well. And for example, okay, if you look at this kind of query, like an almond, uh, we, all, we all know what almond is, but the word almond as a single query changes a lot in the past couple years. So, so when we see the word almond, uh, the first question you will want to ask is, does the user want almond milk, which is in thing right now, or they want almond candy, or almond nuts, or just almond furniture? And at Target, okay, we have uh, maybe a thousand different almond items that we, we can present to the user. And for relevance, we want to put the top five most wanted almond items on the top so that we can get a click and then a sale. Because as a relevance team, we are measured by clicks and sales, which is conversions. And so, so we need a classifier to help us to determine what is the probability of the user looking for almond milk or almond candy or almond nuts or almond furniture? And then the other one, okay, like T-shirt. Um, we all know what T-shirt is. Uh, the engine actually know what T-shirt is also. But the problem is that we do not know whether the user looking for most likely a man T-shirt, uh, a woman T-shirt, a boys or girl T-shirt. And we happen to have thousands of those t-shirts also. So, so uh, we want the search engine to give us some ideas. Uh, we want the classifier to tell us, yes, OK, uh, present woman t-shirt or a man t-shirt or whatever t-shirts. That, again, OK, will help us to get more conversions. And then another problem that we have, now all the the top two problems that I show you are ranking, specific problem, how to rank the items to the top using the classifier. And the last one is a recall problem. Uh, we have quite a lot of queries that we have no results to return. Um, Target is not like the Amazon, where they sell everything in the world. We are very selective. We only sell the good items for the customers, <laughs> right? The, the one that they get more for their money. And so that very often that uh, because our smaller selection, when someone enter a query, we have no results. And that's a recall problem, and we want to fix that also. So here, here are some of the examples of what happened before we had the classifier. Uh, seven ring check binder. So our engine, before the classifier existed, it returned two rings, size seven, which is good for the search engine. It does what it does. And then it, and then it returned three binders. And so as a human, we know that, OK, I don't want the rings to be there, but the search engine doesn't really know. Uh, he had no context, right? So, so we want the... We want the uh, classifier to help us to uh, filter out or push down uh, those uh, two rings on the top. And then uh, this one, OK, covers for elongated toilet is a classic in Target. Uh, that was the very first batch of query that I analyzed 
when I joined Target, because I saw it in the log file, and it got some clicks. So I was wondering, look at the result, how can people, how can people click on them? Because the first one is a barbecue grill with a cover. The second two is uh, elongated furniture with covers. Then it's a cast with covers. And so I was scratching my head trying to figure out, okay, why do people want to click on them? Then I asked my, my wife, she said, yeah, people are interested in see if there's a toilet inside those furnitures. <laughs> so I said, oh, yeah. I said, thank you very much. So I have my work cut out for me. So, so again, okay, this query, okay, uh, as an example, uh, we, we all know that there's no, nothing, nothing called alarm navigation. The user probably meant something else, but he entered the wrong query. Uh, but in our results, set, we say that, okay, we have no result, and then we tell the user to try this and try that. We don't want that, because our goal is to present some relevant result for the customers, so that at least they can explore and see if we are guessing what they, are, what they really are looking for correctly. So, so now that we have our problem defined, so the first thing we want to do is to define at the highest level, how do you want to build a classifier? How does it work with solar? So um, the first thing we want the classifier to do is, it obviously, obviously it has to intercept every query they're coming into solar. Then it has to predict which category having the most relevant items for that query. Uh, in, in Target, we have four levels of categories. And the two levels, we are most interested in the L1 and L2 levels. Uh, for example, we have a top level called clothing. And then we have a second level, underclothing would be men's clothing or, or women's clothing or men's clothing. And we want the classifier to be able to predict that. Because once the classifier can predict that, then we can tell the solar engine how to boost items in those categories. And so another example, okay, home, under home there may be 10 different subcategories, bath, furniture, and all the other home related items. So this is, the, this is the problem space that we want the classifier to do, to solve. Then once the classifier identify the category, then we want the classifier to pass the query to solar together with some boosting instructions. Uh, now this is the power of solar. Solar is a URL driven uh, engine, so we can easily do the boosting by using the uh, DSMAC query parser, using the boost function. Uh, using that, we can tell the solar engine uh, to say, for example, if uh, I wanted to boost any item in the L1 category by a factor of x, you can just write a simple function like this to, to do the boosting. So this will be the interface between the classifier and the solar engine. So, so then here are so some examples of uh, how the classifier will look like when it's done. So if you have a query called Acer, then I would expect the Acer to tell me that this query, uh, the L1 category it will be electronics, uh, the L2 will be office computer. If it's anything else, then the classifier is wrong, right? Uh, because we all know that they, that's what it belongs to. And for the, for the classic query covers for elongated toilet, after, the, after some research, I correctly identified that as a human, I want the classifier to tell me that it's supposed to belong to the home category and followed by the bath subcategories. And then for, so for, for, for uh, for a query called green dress, and it was supposed to be clothing and then women's clothing. So we want to build a classifier that can help us to predict something like that. 
very simple. And so uh, the rest is just an example to show you uh, how we how the classifier interface with the solar. So in this example, I use uh, I'm you oh sorry I push the wrong button. I uh, I use this cover for elongated toilet. If if the classifier determined that for this query, uh, the L1 is home, the L2 is bath, and then we want to the customer we want to tell the solar engine that if there is an item in the recall that belong to the L1 category, the customer the classifier will tell the solar engine to boost it by to boost the relevant score by a factor of x. And if there is an item that belongs to both or matching both the L1 and L2 category, it will boost by a factor of y. And you can determine the x and y uh, based on your tuning. Uh, but basically, it will just multiply the score by a larger factor so that those items will flow to the top naturally. And this is just uh, how we how the classifier alter the query and send to solar. And you can see this this uh, boost function, and then this number of the cat category IDs that we tell to boost. So this is a very simple interface between the classifier and the solar engine. So now next let's talk about how to build a classifier. And for those who are very really familiar with machine learning and training, and uh, people define four types of classifier. Uh, this the this the one that everyone dream to produce. A classifier that has low bias and low variance. That means it's very accurate and very stable. I don't know of anyone has built something like that yet. Now, this is the one that you don't want to build. If you build this kind of classifier, high bias and high variance, you don't have a job. <laughs> so uh, in the retail business, it's very really cutthroat, because every year, my manager will tell me to what? He tell me, OK, Howard, we want to increase the sales by 30%. So if you build. If you build a classifier like this, we will not make it. So, so for, for our team, we talk about it, so we have to choose between these two evils. Uh, either low bias, high variance. This one means that okay, it's accurate, but it's not very stable, classifier. And or high bias and low variance, which is not as accurate, but very stable. So our solution is this one. So we start with a very basic approach. We choose the naive base classifier, which is a very well documented type of classifier, had been around for 60 to 100 years. So the concept is very simple. Almost you can find any textbook to tell you how to build one. Uh, if you have a a log file of query and the clicks on the category, you can build a classifier using a naive based algorithm. So, and, but naive base is high bias. So that means, okay, it has a pretty high false positive, which may be a problem because you don't want the classifier to tell you the wrong category, right? and it will affect the relevance. Uh, but like base is very easy to build and very scalable, very stable. So we can, we can scale it. Uh, we have 60 million queries, unique queries that we see every year and, 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 and growing. So we have a large query set, top queries and tail queries, and we we want our classifier to be able to understand every query, able to have an opinion on each one of them, and hopefully uh, very accurate. So 
uh, to be scalable, and also we have the classifier have to return the results within 10 milliseconds, which is a criteria for us. And so in order to do this very quickly and very accurately, you really want to have a classifier to have a very small dictionary. So you can, you can look at the dictionary very fast, do the calculation very fast, and but able to understand millions of queries. Uh, classify, for example, I, I did a rough calculation. One of my engineers who told me, his PK who told me that, oh, Howard, our classifier is so good, we can understand 100 million queries. The 100 million is a really good, good number to use. And so I double checked it, and he was right. And so, <clears throat> but however, to, to, to compensate for the high false positive, so we introduced a feature called confidence score to control and reduce the false positive. So what, what I mean is that if the classifier could be wrong sometimes, I want to know when is the classifier probably wrong. So if the classifier is wrong at that time, I know that it's wrong, then I will tell the classifier, do not trigger, do not tell me anything. I only want the classifier to tell me its prediction when it's pretty sure that it's right. By doing that, then I can control the false positive. So, so we, what, when we generate the dictionary, we also calculate uh, the confidence for each of the predictions. Uh, for example, if we have a query called cover, after we build a classifier, the, ca the classifier tells us that, okay, cover for a single token query, it belongs to home and home decor, and the confidence for its prediction for home is 57%. Uh, so this is pretty good, it's ab above average, but it's still 40% chance it's wrong, right? And then for example, for the single query called four, is predict electronics and video games. Look at the confidence, 16%. Now, uh, it makes sense because four is a very noisy word. So I wouldn't expect the classifier to tell me that it's high confidence on that prediction. And so for, for elongated, uh, look at the confidence, 95%. What they mean is that the classifier is telling me that if it see the word elongated in the query, it know pretty sure that based on the naive based algorithm, it belongs to the home category. If 95% confidence. And it also belongs to the bath and the home at 90% confidence. So these two numbers will tell me that elongated, the word is highly associated with the home category. And that's what I want the classifier to do. And then for toilet, okay, it's grocery and it's home essential, house, household essential. This makes sense because uh, most people, when they enter the word toilet, the number one item they buy is toilet paper. And so, and those are right there. So, so, so now, okay, by looking at the output, if, if you imagine, if you look at 10,000 output, 20,000 output, 100,000 output, if you can, agree or disagree with the prediction of the classifier, then you can judge the precision of the classifier, which is the most important first step you want to do to qualify a classifier. How often it is right and how often it's wrong. And so you can see that, for example, if you look at this cover for elongated toilet, if you look at the individual tokens, cover predict home and elongated predict home, so if you look at these two probability, you do some math, you can, you can pretty much conclude that the total confidence is about 97%, so it's pretty high. So that's how the classifier works. It takes all the individual confidence and do some mathematics to calculate it. It's a linear function, and you calculate the confidence for each of the predictions. So, 
So I talk, I, I talk about precisions, right? This is the most important thing you want to do in a classifier. So you want to figure out how often you agree with the classifier's prediction. And then you correlate it with the confidence score produced by the classifier. And you want the graph to show you that uh, the precision should be proportional to the confidence. If the graph look like that, for example, you look at this, when the classifier is 90% confidence, and we, I, we hire judges to judge a large number of queries, uh, like about 50,000 to 100,000 queries, and we got almost 100% precision. That means the human agree with the classifier's prediction. And as the confidence go lower, say to 60%, then the number of correct predictions becomes lower. So this is a sign of a well-behaved classifier. I don't, I don't want it to be good or the, uh, precise all the time, but at least I know when I can trust it or not to trust it. So we, we do a lot of precision testing on the classifier on both the L1 and the L2 category to make sure that I have a very well-behaved classifier. So once you have that, then you can go to the next step. Now this is a little bit complicated uh, table to look at. It sounds trivial to me because I, we look at this all the time uh, when we build a classifier. I, try to, I will try to explain to you slowly on this one. So um, when the, one thing that we want to define is called trigger rate at a certain confidence. Uh, so, which in our definition is number of queries with the X confidence. So if I send a large number of queries to the classifier, the classifier give me all the predictions with the confidence, then I want to figure out uh, for different confidence how many queries. Uh, the, classif the classifier has a prediction. So for example, if we look at our single token query uh, for the test that we have done, at the confidence level of 70% for the L1 category, and the trigger rate is 50%, and the trigger rate decreases as the confidence goes higher. And at 90%, it's very accurate, but the trigger rate is very low. So this will tell us that the customer is actually behaving correctly because at a high confidence, you have not too many uh, queries that it can predict correctly. So this is a trade-off, okay, you, you want to find your poison, right? So you want to say, if I want it to be really, really precise, then I want to tell the classifier to trigger at 90% confidence. But if I say I don't really want it to be that precise, but I want to increase the trigger rate, then you will choose a lower confidence number. All right? And then one observation that you can make is that if you look at the, the fee token uh, queries, uh, has the highest uh, trigger rate. Uh, what that means is that um, if you have a fee token query, if it, if, uh, based on our, our judgment, at 70% L1 confidence, it triggers uh, at 80% of the queries. That means 80% of the fee token queries, the classifier has a suggestion. And even for 90% trick, uh, confidence level, the, the trigger rate is 64%. That means the classifier is pretty accurate when the number of tokens is longer and longer, which is consistent with the naive based uh, algorithm. Because when you have more tokens, you have more support to basically to conclude the confidence and the, and the predictions. So, so now, okay, I have this table of uh, different number of tokens in the query and a different confidence level at L1 and different trigger rate. So I can determine 
how I want to tune the engine. Uh, to tune it, we need one more piece of information, which is what we call the uh, NTCG. NTCG is a very well-known way to measure the relevance of the engine. So what we did was that we then take the classifier that we just built, hook up to the solar engine, and then use it to tell the solar what result to return, and then we measure the NTCG of the result set. Now, you can measure the top five or top 10 or top 20, up to you, depending on your business or your search engine. Um, at the end, you want to figure out the NTCG score with and without the classifier. And so this is the gain, this is score. 22% uh, means that if I have a classifier, the NTC score is 22% better than without a classifier at 80% confidence at this one. So if I choose this confidence level to tell the classifier only trigger when the confidence is 80%, I can see that the relevance score of the engine improved by 22%, which is really good. Now, the recall is not very really high, only 40%, but uh, my year base is not very really good at single token query. So I, I'm, I'm happy with that. Because if I go to 70% uh, confidence trigger rate, my NDC score, uh, score is much lower. Okay. Great, we've got 10 minutes more. So, and so for, you can see that, okay, for, for two token and three token, we do a sim similar ex experiment. So what we have done is that then, my rule is, or our rule is, in order to achieve a 10% gain in conversion, I want the energy score to be 10% or higher at the end. So each one of them, I pick, uh, uh, an entry in the table based on the NTC score. For the two token, uh, at 80% confidence, uh, I got a 54% trigger rate, and the NTC score is 9.2%, which is good enough. So I choose this number. And for three tokens, uh, at lower confidence, uh, I still get a 10% increase in uh, NTG, and, and the NTG score, so I choose 80% trigger rate. By doing that, I basically, I have a really refined way to control how the classifier works for one token, two token, or three token queries, and trigger, and ask it to trigger correctly. So after we build the classifier, though, so we have to test it, right? So we work on this for about six months, and when we saw the results, we were very happy. So, seven ring check binder, we are we pushing the, the, the rings to the bottom. And the cover for, for elongated toilet, uh, holy smoke. So, we have thoracic covers. Actually, they were buried in the middle somewhere. But the customer helped us to tell the solar engine to move those items to the top. Now, alarm navigation, I did not explain to you how we fixed the problem. But the result looks good, right? And so this is the last slide I want to explain to you in about five minutes' time, how we solve the recall problem using the classifier also. Um, so the solar has a minimum match of two for every query. That means, OK, for three token queries, you have to match at least two terms. For two token query, query you, you've got to match at least, you've got to match all two terms, which is a problem. If the two terms the user enter uh, is not part of the title or the attributes that we have in our index, and this query alarm navigation is a good example. So, so we have no results. So to solve the problem, a very simple technique that we use is uh, term dropping. So we say, okay, these two terms we want to figure out which term we want to drop. And uh, Obviously, okay, when we do term dropping, we don't want to lose the precision. Because when you drop one term, you lose half the precision. 
So we also want the classifier to help us to maintain some precision so that the result looks decent. So what we do is that, OK, so we first of all, we send the query to the classifier uh, to, to have it tell us, OK, what category belong to what the confidence. So we say 98% for electronic, 92% for iPod, which is good. So, so we know that, OK, the classifier knows something. So I can drop some term. But which term to drop? So we, we take, it, take individual term, we take the alarm individually, send to the classifier, and ask it to give us a prediction. It say electronic, but 73% only. Then we send navigation to the, to the classifier, it say, oh, electronic, but 98%. So what, I'm, what I can tell is that the classifier trusts the navigation more than the alarm. So we will tell the engine, we tell the customer to tell the solar engine that you search only for the word navigation, but you also boost <coughs> items that belong to the electronic and the GPS navigation category. And when we did that, so we got this result. We got GPS navigation system. So this much. <coughs> pretty much conclude uh, our experiment with the classifier and how we, how we did it. <laughs> Any question? Oh, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, that's just quite correct. And in fact, naive base is very simple, but it can filter some of the noisy words right. in the query. Right. So right. using behavior data, when they click a lot, we can actually limit the search to a certain very relevant category. Yeah, yeah. and you're depending on the spoken base yeah. query, but yeah. at the same time, you're limiting the noise. Yeah. So the, the closer you are to the engine, the closer you are to the engine, the closer you are to the engine, the and the question, yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. So, so that is the power of naive base. Naive base is, is saying that the dictionary only have to consist of single token terms. So you may have 60 million queries but there's only a million unique terms, unique words. So our dictionary is only about one million uh, single tokens. So it's very small. And so we can look up very quickly, and, and then we can create the calculation for any query using putting all the terms together and calculate the combined probability. Hi. Naive base? Faith. Faith? Faith? Okay. Uh, very good question. So, so obviously, okay, naive base is very naive, right? It say uh, a single token is good enough, but it's not the case. So, so if you have a very really complicated query where you have uh, brand names, you have biogram that's important, naive base cannot help you to solve that. And so, in fact, we have other projects going on in Target. Sati is working on that to using bigram, okay, to help us to improve the uh, precision also. Hi. Yeah. I, I have two questions. How do you actually know this? I mean, as far as you know, this is the company policy to try to find solutions. Oh, uh, yes, very good question. So I didn't talk about L2. So we do, okay, I just will give you a very simple example. So we do all kinds of combinations L1 and L2 combination. 
if you look at one of the slides, okay, you will see that in some case, the prediction was actually uh, wrong. Uh, if you look at uh, this one here, look at this one here, 99% versus 50%, how can that happen? So, so that means our data has some noise in there. Uh, so we use it, but use it in a limited fashion to help us to boost the calculation, but we do use it. Uh, it's just okay, there's a, it's a, it's a long process. I don't have time to really talk about that in detail. What happens? Okay, so NT, you know NTCG measurement, right? So what we do is that we hire three judges to come to target. We chain them to the chair. <laughs> so we feed them a million items to look at. Every day to do nothing, and then they can eat. But besides eating, they tell us yes or no for one million items. And so those are human, and they're intelligent, and they are good shoppers. So they tell us whether they agree or disagree with the result set or the classifier predictions. And then we use human to judge them. Obviously, okay, I cannot do that for too long because after a while, okay, it becomes abusive. <laughs> so, so even though I pay them good money, but uh, still really not good for them, so we actually, we, at Target, we build another machine learning model using their judgment to automatically judge other relevance uh, uh, to, for, for, for judgment at a, a thousand times the speed also. Oh, so I'm running, stop, okay. <laughs> Sorry, okay, thank you so much. Okay, I can, uh, you can come here and ask any more questions later. I appreciate it very much.